So let's now talk briefly about why cholesterol being raised is a bad thing. Why is this even of a concern in the first place? And the reason that it's of concern is because of a disease process called atherosclerosis. So this is a disease process that affects the arteries of the body. So if I just draw an artery here, so this is a cross section of an artery. So um, this is the lumen of the artery and this is the wall of the artery, a very simple picture. So this is, a no this is supposed to represent normal, a nice healthy wall of the artery. However, what can happen over years and years and years is a disease process called atherosclerosis where cholesterol deposits within the wall of the artery. So this is going to represent an atherosclerotic plaque, a cholesterol deposit here within the wall of this artery. So this artery is no longer healthy, it's affected by atherosclerosis. And now, of course, this will thicken the wall of the artery, having this cholesterol deposit within it. And you can see that now the boundary of the wall, the inner boundary, has encroached in on the lumen, and the lumen of the blood vessel is thin, or, or is narrowed. So this can happen within arteries all over the body. It takes years, decades and decades, for it to happen. Um, and depending on where it's going to hit you'll get different consequences of that. So for instance, it can happen in the coronary arteries, so the arteries that supply the heart with blood, and we call that coronary artery disease. It can happen in the uh, arteries within the brain, and we call this cerebrovascular disease, CVD for short. The other place that it's, it massively affects, or it commonly affects, it can affect any artery, but these are the three main places that it affects the coronary arteries, the cerebral arteries, and then what we call peripheral arterial disease, where even though the peripheral seems as though it's non-specific, it actually almost always refers to the arteries of the legs. That's the common place for it to occur, so the arteries that supply the legs with blood, so the big arteries within the legs. So um, let's just talk about now I, before I um, go into a little bit of a discussion about each of these, let's just talk about what contributes to atherosclerosis. So it's a cholesterol deposit. So as you might be able to um, work out for yourself, having too high cholesterol within your blood accelerates this process. It makes it more likely that you're going to develop this and more likely that you're going to develop this quicker uh, and bigger deposits. So hypercholesterolemia contributes to this disease um, other things that contribute to this disease, having high blood pressure, which is why doctors get so uh, fussed not only about people's cholesterol level, but also about people's blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is far too high, that's talking about the pressure within your arterial vessels. Uh, so the pressure inside the lumen, the pressure that the blood is under is going to be too high and is going to be pressing on the wall uh, of the um, artery here and is going to be damaging it and that is another thing that contributes to the development of atherosclerosis so having too high blood pressure also accelerates atherosclerosis and then another major thing is smoking that's another big risk factor so smoking whenever you smoke a cigarette you're breathing in all sorts of toxins they're being uh, absorbed in the lungs into the blood um, and then they circulate within the bloodstream and they can poison the walls of the arteries and again irritate them and that except that um, contributes to this disease process it promotes atherosclerosis so if you smoke you're more likely to develop atherosclerosis and more likely to, to develop it at a younger age because it's occurred quicker so um, that's a, a brief discussion of risk factors so this is the reason that we get concerned about hypercholesterolemia because it's a major risk factor for developing atherosclerosis. So what are the consequences of this? Well, of course, you can see that it's going to reduce the blood flow uh, to whichever portion of the body um, is supplied by this artery. So if that's the coronary, if this has happened in the coronary arteries, that means the heart is going to permanently be getting a smaller supply of blood. Now, that might be okay when you're sat at rest, your heart might be able to cope with that smaller amount of blood, but when you exercise, your heart is going to have to start working harder to pump the additional blood to the muscles that are now working. Uh, and with that smaller blood supply that the heart now has because of the coronary artery disease, it might not be able to cope with that and it will lead to um, horrible cardiac pain, which is called angina specifically exertional angina. So when you get chest pain, cardiac chest pain on exertion, 
uh, it's called exertional angina and the most common reason for that to occur is that you've got coronary artery disease that means that the heart can't get enough blood supply to uh, meet the demand of the heart in that exertional situation. In addition, not only is that going to be the uh, long-term consequence of having coronary artery disease, but what can also happen is these portions of the arteries are not happy. These portions that are affected by atherosclerotic disease are not happy, and things that should not happen can happen over the top of them. So you know, of course, that the blood can clot. Now, this is supposed to happen when a blood vessel gets broken open and a clot is supposed to form in that break to plug up the break. However, blood can clot within the actual lumen of blood vessels, and that is a disease process. That's not supposed to happen, but it's called thrombosis when it does happen. Now, having atherosclerosis affecting the wall of a blood vessel means that it's much more likely to thrombose or, or for, for thrombosis to occur on the surface of that. So blood can clot on the surface of these atherosclerotic plaques. Thrombosis can occur, and that can lead to the entire blood vessel being blocked up by the well, the combined atherosclerotic plaque and the thrombosis that's occurred on it. And if that happens, uh, that will lead to complete cessation of blood flow to whichever tissue this supplies. And if that happens in one of the coronary arteries of the heart, that means that a huge section of the heart will die. That is a heart attack, uh, or to give it its fancy name, a myocardial infarction. Myocardial just refers to the heart infarction, uh, means to die because of lack of blood supply. Now, heart attacks can either kill you straight away because if they are big enough and bad enough, they can cause complete electrical chaos within the heart. Remember, the re only reason the heart beats is because there is a really fancy uh, array of electrical activity occurring that has to occur in a very ordered way. Now, if you have a great big portion of heart that's dying, that might completely disrupt the electrical uh, signaling within the heart and lead to absolute chaos that causes the heart to stop a beating. So it might lead to a fatal cardiac arrhythmia um, that causes the cardiac arrest, which is when the heart stops beating. Um, and, you know, if your heart stops beating, you can only survive that for a few minutes. It has to restart within a few minutes if you're going to live. So if it doesn't, then you will, uh, you will die from that. So heart attacks can kill you straight away. If, however, they don't lead to a fatal cardiac arrhythmia, uh, then, and you survive it, uh, the long-term consequences of having a heart attack will be that a huge portion of the heart muscle has died. It won't be replaced with muscle tissue. It will be replaced with scar tissue. And that means that your heart's going to be weak long-term now, forevermore. So you can develop a condition called heart failure from that, where the heart is too weak to be able to do its job anymore. So um, coronary artery disease is not good at all. So we're trying to prevent coronary artery disease and that's one of the reasons that we want to lower people's cholesterol level.